Once the student completes SWIC orientation, he'll move on to SWIC BCT. And the one of the first evolutions we conduct on day two is a water rescue test. If a student is unable to complete the evolution or pass the test, he will go before a review board and will be considered for either removal from training or possibly setback. And we're looking for students to be able to rescue a simulated drowning victim. Real world application is someone gets thrown off a boat or knocked unconscious and we need to be able to perform a rescue in the open ocean. The technique starts by executing a stride jump and entering the water. The student will then rescue crawl stroke to the simulated drowning victim. At that time, they will assess their victim and do what we call the head escape method. The uh, victim will try and use them as a buoy. They'll slip the, the clinch, get control of their victim, and put them into a straight arm collar toe. They'll use a straight arm collar toe to plane the victim out. Once they have the victim on plane, they'll transition what we call the cross chest carry. From then, it's a gut check, and they have to uh, complete a 25 meter rescue stroke. If at any time the student doesn't execute the stride jump, the head escape method or the cross chest carry, and the victim is unable to continue a normal breathing cycle, we consider that a failure, and the student will not move on. This is a high attrition evolution. We can attribute most of our attrition to this evolution, and it's just because a lot of our students will show up unprepared and not comfortable in the water. One way guys can practice when they're home is they can either uh, consult the total immersion swimming technique. Uh, so any, any lifeguard videos they can watch, techniques, the total immersion swimming techniques, we rely heavily on that as part of our, our teaching method. So if you can find uh, swim coaches, lifeguarding, any of those things in your local area will, will benefit.